Hey everyone, this is GWR Studios. For today's video, I'm going to be doing an in-depth review of the Lionel HO Polar Express. I have all of the pieces here. I have the steam locomotive, the three car passenger pack, and I also have the two add-on coaches, the hot chocolate car and the passenger car. Now these are all brand new items. They were just released at the beginning of this month and we're gonna be looking at each of these items and I'm gonna give my opinion on them. I'll also run these items on my layout and I'll show you how to set everything up. So the first item we're gonna look at is the Berkshire Steam Locomotive. When you get the locomotive, it comes in this nice blue box. My only complaint I'd have to say is the box makes the train look a little cheap. It doesn't look like an expensive model train. I guess the nice thing about this box is it does allow you to see the locomotive without opening the box. On the back of the box, it says complete your story by getting the add-on cars. And it also tells you the locomotive and tender features. So without further ado, let's unbox this train. The locomotive, tender, and remote control are nicely packed in this plastic container. In order to remove the plastic from the top, you just pull these little tabs here, and the plastic covering comes right off. So let's take a look at the locomotive first. Both the locomotive and tender are wrapped in this plastic wrapping. And here it is guys, the Lionel HO Polar Express Berkshire Steam Locomotive. Now holding this item in my hands, the very first thing that I notice is that the body is plastic. It's not a die cast metal construction like the American Flyer Polar Express. So that's a little bit of a letdown. I will say, even though it is a plastic construction, it really doesn't look that bad. Now we'll take a closer look at the wheels. Now, looking at the design of these wheels, I have to tell you, I'm still not a fan. They certainly don't look quite as bad as the pre-production models that we saw earlier this year, but in certain lighting, they just don't look quite right. Sometimes their appearance makes them look like a light silver. At other times, it looks like a dark black. I just wish that these wheels were a black color and they had the silver lining around the wheels. It would look so sharp if it had that design. So holding the locomotive closer, we can see some more of the details. There's this nice swinging bell on the front. That looks really neat. And the rest of the body looks very similar to the American Flyer Polar Express. Now many of you have been asking me if this model smokes. The answer is no, there is no smoke unit in this model. The rest of the body, like I said before, is very similar to the American Flyer Polar Express. Most of the details, like the external handrail, are part of the body's design. Looking more close at the front of the engine, for the most part, it looks pretty good. There's a lot of details, but the only thing that I don't care for is that these marker lights, these little green lights up here, they're not really lights, they're just painted. Other than that, the front of the engine looks very nice. Moving towards the back of the locomotive, we can see little details like these rivets and also the 1225 written on the side of the cab. And inside the cab, you can see all the controls for the train. That's definitely a nice touch. So there are some things about this locomotive that I'd like to see changed, but overall, it's really not that bad of a model. Next, let's take a look at the tender. Just like the locomotive, the tender is constructed out of plastic. You know, the plastic really is not that big of a deal, but I think it's just the fact that I paid quite a bit of money for this model, and I was expecting it to have a metal design like the American Flyer Polar Express. Looking more close at the tender, we can see tons of rivets on the sides. It looks really neat. And these trucks have lots of details as well. On the side of the tender, it says Polar Express in a nice clean yellow font. And the cold load looks pretty realistic. Now one thing that you're going to notice about this tender is that it has this wiring harness on it. This harness will be plugged into the steam locomotive, and then it'll send information to this tender, which allows it to reproduce different sounds. All of the sounds are going to be coming out of this tender, and if we flip this tender over, we can see there's a really big speaker inside. You'll also notice a couple switches. The one at the top is the remote track switch, and this controls whether the locomotive will respond to track power or to your Lion Chief remote control. And the second switch below is just for the sound. It can either be on or off. Now if we look at the back of the tender, we can see there's a backup light, and there's also this really tiny lettering at the bottom of the tender. After looking at these items up close, you really start to appreciate the little details put into it. I'm sure this tender's gonna look really nice behind the steam locomotive. And the last thing that comes with the steam locomotive is the Lion Chi remote control. Now this remote control has a durable plastic design. At the bottom it has a really big Lionel logo, that looks real neat. And it also says in clear white letters, Lionel HO, right above the logo, along with the Polar Express 1225. Now the controls on this remote are fairly simple. There's this great big dial at the top, and it allows you to change the direction and speed of the locomotive. And there's also these three buttons underneath of that dial. 
The first button is the whistle, the second one is announcements, and the third one is the bell. All of these buttons are really easy to press, and it feels like they're going to be very responsive when I'm operating my train. Now one thing that does not come with the remote are three AAA batteries, you'll have to get those separately. So that's everything that's included with the steam locomotive, but we still have to look at the passenger cars, we'll look at those next. First let's take a look at the three pack. So looking at the box for the three pack, the passenger cars are nicely arranged, and I think since you don't see as much of the white plastic inside, it makes the packaging look a little better. Now if we flip the package over we can see once again it tells us the features of the product inside and it also says complete your story by buying the steam locomotive and the two add-on passenger cars. So now I'm going to go ahead and unbox it. Now inside the box we can see that the passenger cars are nice and secure in this container. I'm sure this container will keep them safe when I package them back up. Now there's three different types of passenger cars in this three pack and the first one that we're going to look at is the marionette car. Now assuming that most of you guys have watched the Polar Express movie, you'll remember that there was a scene where the conductor, the girl, and the boy were all walking in a car and there were all these abandoned toys in it. Well, this is that train car and if we look in the windows, we can see the puppets dangling from the ceiling. And other than the observation car, which we'll get to in a little bit, that's really the only difference between all of these passenger cars. Different silhouettes are placed in the windows to recreate different scenes from the movie. One thing that I forgot to mention were these KD couplers. They're very nice in appearance, they look very realistic, and they're really easy to use. Now looking closer at the side of the passenger car, I really think that they did a good job. On camera, these train cars look pretty big, but you have to remember, these are actually pretty small. This is HO scale, it's half the size of O gauge. I especially like how they kept the ends of the train cars open, so that you can see inside. One thing that I do wish was on these passenger cars was snow on the roofs. That really looked cool on the American Flyer, and I'm sure it would have looked good on this HO model. So that was the marionette car. Now let's take a look at the next car, which happens to be a regular passenger car. Now I say regular passenger car because this car doesn't show any scene from the movie. All that you'll find are the silhouettes of some children in the windows. Everything about these passenger cars looks pretty good. The paint job looks very nice, and the Polar Express writing on the top, it also looks very nice. Now if we flip the car over, you'll see some details on the underbody, and I don't see a switch to turn off the lights. That's one thing that I should mention is that all of these passenger cars are going to light up when they're running behind the train. So that was the regular passenger car. And the last car that's in this three pack is the observation car, which probably has the coolest design out of all of the passenger cars. Now looking at the side, at first glance it looks very similar to the other passenger cars. But if you look at the end, you'll see they have a nice observation deck. And let me just say, they nailed the look of this observation deck. It looks very similar to the one in the movie. One thing that I'm super excited about is that they finally added a tail light that functions in the observation car. This is a little detail that's been absent from the other Polar Express models. It'll be neat to see what that looks like running on the track. Now, if we keep looking at the observation car, yeah, it does have the nice designs like the other passenger cars, but there is one flaw, and I think a lot of you know what I'm about to say. Billy, also known as the Lonely Boy, is at the wrong end of the observation car. Now, this is something that I first noticed way back in October when they were showcasing the Polar Express at the York train show. Somehow, some way, they managed to put the boy at the wrong end of the car. Now most people that look at this passenger car are never going to notice that, but for me that really bugs me because all of my previous Polar Express models have always featured Billy at the back of the observation car, so I don't know why the HO one has him on the wrong end. Now what I'm really hoping is that Lionel will correct this in the future, and then this car will become a rare collector's piece. That would be really cool. Other than that, I really like this observation car. So that was the three pack, but there's also two more add-on cars available for separate sale. The cars I'm talking about, of course, are the hot chocolate car and a regular passenger car. Much like the packaging for the three pack, the packaging for these passenger cars is not bad. The car that I'm currently holding is the hot chocolate car. The back of the packaging tells you the features of the passenger car. Now inside of the boxes, it's pretty hard to tell which car is which. The easiest way to identify the car is to take a look at the end flap. It has this label across it that tells you what car it is. So enough talking about the packaging, let's open these up. First we'll take a look at the hot chocolate car. The box was real easy to open, and just like the three pack, it's kept in place with a nice plastic container. Now other than the marionette car, this is the only other passenger car that features a scene from the movie. 
If we look in the silhouettes, we can see the chef serving hot chocolate to all the children. Just looking at these silhouettes makes the hot chocolate song pop in your head. And that's really all there is to say about this car. It has nice details and brings back memories from the movie. And last but not least, let's take a look at the regular passenger car. The packaging is identical to the hot chocolate car, so we'll go ahead and skip that. Now I'm not going to spend a lot of time talking about this passenger car, because it's identical to the passenger car in the 3-pack. I think the idea behind this car is that if you want to add a bunch of cars behind your HO Polar Express, you can simply buy several of these passenger cars. Now it would have been really neat to see a baggage car this year, or maybe even a diner car. I'm sure that's coming down the line, but until then these are the add-on cars that are currently available. So now that we've opened all of the HO Polar Express pieces, I'm going to run them on my layout. Now my layout is on a 4x8 sheet of plywood, and the track that I'm using is Bachman Easy Track. As of the recording of this video, Lionel doesn't offer the HO Polar Express as a ready-to-run train set, so until then, you're gonna have to get yourself a loop of track. So before my HO Polar Express came in the mail, I actually went out and purchased this HO track from my local hobby shop, and you're also gonna need a DC power supply. Now this is a power supply that I've had for several years now, so unless you have one already, you're going to have to go buy one. So before we put the locomotive on the track, I'm going to show you how you attach this wiring harness from the tender to the locomotive. The first thing that I would do is I would suggest that you lay your locomotive on a table. This will make it easier to put the wiring harness in the locomotive. Now it is super important that you pay attention to this step. When you take the wiring harness, you have to make sure that you're lining it up correctly with the holes. This harness is not very easy to put into the locomotive, so I suggest that you're very careful while putting it in. Not only do you want to make sure that it's aligned right, but you don't want to snap any of those wires off. Now once you get the wiring harness in there, you're not done yet. If you look at the bottom, you'll see there's a metal rod with two holes in it. Now, the way it works is you just take that metal rod and you let the tender slip through the hole. Now there is a reason why there's two holes. For a more realistic look, it looks better to put it through the hole closest to the locomotive. But if you have tight radius curves on your layout, you're going to want to put it through the hole farthest away from the locomotive. Alright, so now the locomotive is officially ready to go onto the track. I'm going to make sure that I have every single wheel on the track and everything's aligned just right. Next, I'm going to put all the passenger cars behind the locomotive. The correct order is the marionette car, a regular passenger car, the other regular passenger car, the hot chocolate car, and last, the observation car. Coupling these passenger cars is a piece of cake. You simply go right beside the coupler and push them together. I mean, it's that easy. All right, so now the locomotive and all my passenger cars are on my layout and I'm ready to fire it up. So the first thing you're gonna wanna do is turn your power supply up to a reasonable amount. I turned mine all the way up so I had maximum power. Now, assuming you have everything hooked up right, your locomotive should be flashing its lights and making this sound. This sound means that the locomotive has power and it's ready to run, but the signal from the Lion Chief controller is not on. So all you have to do is flip the switch on your Flyer Chief remote, and the locomotive will start up. Now here's what the locomotive sounds like at idle. All of the sounds that you're hearing are coming out of this tender, and let me tell you, the sounds are very loud. In fact, I'd say that this model is twice as loud as my American Flyer. The controls on this remote are very responsive, and I love the fact that when you press a button, you instantly hear the sound. There's absolutely no delay. And of course, the selling point of HO scale, for me anyway, has always been the realism. Look how slow this train moves. It looks so realistic. Now there are a few other announcements that come out of the tender. Now I noticed that when you speed up the locomotive and you press the announcement button, you hear this. So now I'm just going to let the engine run around my layout and I'm going to play some of the sounds and give you an idea of what this engine sounds like in operation.
I then wanted to test out my locomotive to see how fast I could get it to go, and boy, does this thing go fast. Whenever I would try this with my American Flyer, it would always just shut down the train. I guess that was a safety feature, but with the HO Polar Express, it just flies. So this video is about over, but before I end it, I want to show you a couple other things. Notice the LEDs in the passenger cars. It looks real good, but to be honest, I kind of liked the incandescent lights because it looked more like the movie. And of course, I can't forget the observation car's illuminated tail light. The light looks really good, but the thing that surprised me was when you look at the light when it's not lit up, it has a red appearance, but when it's lit up on the track, it almost looks white. So I'm sure you guys are all wondering, what are my final thoughts on this model? Well, I'll tell you, I've really come to like this model. Although there are some things about the model that I wish were changed, the model is a good runner, and it has some very nice sounds. But I want to be honest with you guys. I still firmly believe that the American Flyer Polar Express is the best buy for your money. This HO Polar Express is a great model. I really like it. However, if you're just getting started with model trains, and you'd like to get the HO Polar Express, just keep in mind that not only are you gonna have to buy the locomotive and the passenger cars, but you're also gonna have to go out, find some HO track and a power supply. Now here's my prediction for Lionel in the HO world. I have a gut feeling that they're going to release a catalog dedicated to HO model trains. And in this catalog, we're gonna see the HO Polar Express available as a ready to run train set. Now, if they do introduce a ready-to-run train set in the future, I can almost guarantee that they're going to introduce HO Fast Track. I'm also going to predict that they're going to release at least one more passenger car for the HO Polar Express, and we might also see some other HO model trains, such as a diesel locomotive, maybe some switches, who knows? I guess we'll just have to wait and see until early next year. But in the meantime, hey, we've got the Lionel HO Polar Express. They released it before Christmas. I can't believe it. Now, if you guys have any questions that you'd like to ask me about the HO Polar Express, feel free to leave a comment below, and I'll try my best to answer your question. So I hope you guys enjoyed this in-depth review of the Lionel HO Polar Express. Thanks so much for watching and have a great day.